I'm Charlie Price, and I'm from Greenwood, South Carolina. I'm a full-time college student. I'm about to work um, a full-time job this summer um, in between semesters of college. Very cool. What major? I just switched from exercise science, and now I'm going into sport, entertainment, and management. All right, so we're going back to some of the more QA stuff. So what? tell me, uh, what kind of nevus do you have? At, yeah. So I was born with, I believe it's called a cape nevus. So it covered my entire back and kind of partially up my neck. And when I was really, really young, um, my parents decided it's the best move to get that removed just because it showed some sign, like early signs of cancer in some places. And it was just like causing problems. It would blister or not blister, but it kind of like rub on stuff and get irritated. So I've got that removed as a baby. And I have a lot of satellite nevus that I've also gotten removed and had skin grafts and stuff like that. So I've had about 21 or 22 surgeries total to get just different places that showed early concern removed, but nothing has ever come back as cancerous because we caught it really early on. Um, A lot of them as a baby were my parents' decision, but I'm glad they did it because um, it, it allowed me, I feel like, to do a lot more. I feel like if I had that Cape Nevis on my back, um, it's kind of a high risk for injury. So I wouldn't have been able to do sports as much as I did or be involved with um, maybe like Boy Scouts and stuff as heavily as I was. So I feel like them making those calls were good, like good decisions when few, I was young. Um, kind of going into decisions that we had already made up as a family, I guess, that I was like, hey, I don't really like how this birthmark looks. Or like most recently, really, I had a few on my chin and like I would cut them when I was shaving on accident and like they would bleed for like hours. So I kind of went into that and I was like, I kind of want to get these removed because they're just kind of a pain. So, but the more of the stuff that I've chosen to have removed is cosmetic than kind of a threat, I guess. Um, I've had one on my chin and one on my upper lip removed that I remember on my face mm. that I can like vividly remember. And they went in and pretty much numbed me up and took the birthmarks out. And then just, I don't know if they stitched it up or if they used like a butterfly like a butterfly bandage to kind of close it and let it heal on its own. But yeah, they just kind of close the gap on those. Yeah, no, it's it, like the difference, the difference from the, having that birthmark versus the nevus uh, or for having the nevus versus having like the skin grafts. I feel like I would take the skin grafts all day just for how I've lived my life. I, I mean, I was a rough kid. I kind of grew up in the country. So we'd go out and play in the woods and get cut up. And I played football and baseball and stuff where like I even have parts of the nevus where I didn't remove kind of right here mm -hmm. where I got cleated in football and it was like so much worse if it had been like regular skin on that nevus right there so I feel like having that removed it would just it didn't like tear as easy and it wasn't quite as sensitive so it kind of functioned more like regular skin in that aspect but again I did lose the feeling and the ability to sweat yeah, I mean, you weren't really going to sweat that well with the yeah. Yeah, it was skin grafts. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they went about all of them, but I know some of them I would have like expanders. I remember I had expanders like in my chest. Um, I might have had some skin taken off of my thigh, I want to say, but like I'm too young to remember most of the major ones. But um, it's, it's majority skin graft. Like my back is completely skin graft up until like right before it kind of cuts off into my side. Um, and that, I mean, it's honestly, that doesn't look that much different than like normal skin. I can't really sweat back there and I don't have as many nerves back there. So I don't feel pain as much, but it really as okay. much sensation. So in your personal experience, like personal history, like all the surgery like worked out for you. You didn't oh, have, like, you didn't have any like nerve issues. You didn't have any like bad scarring. You didn't have any residuals in a negative no. way. Nothing like that. I mean, obviously, some of the scars are visible, but they're like, honestly, like the older ones that I had when I was younger, I can barely even see some of those now. So the really the scars that are noticeable are my newer ones. And I honestly have scars from like, my own experiences, aside from having Nevis, they're like more noticeable than my surgery scars. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I got into a bike accident when I was in middle school and have a pretty gnarly scar on my leg from that. And that's way more noticeable than like, probably 80% of my surgery scars. I mean, I grew up a happy kid, um, but it was almost just like a normal part of life for me. I didn't realize it was that different until I got into, like you said, the more conscious parts of 
life where you know, other people start to notice it more than you do. So, um, you know, surgeries and all that and the regular checkups with the dermatologist and stuff like that, that was just a normal part of life for me. I didn't realize it was even most people didn't have to do that. But I was, I was definitely aware of it. Um, and then I did kind of have a little rough patch where I started to notice, you know, people thought I was different. And um, I got bullied a little bit at a younger age for it, but got super involved with a lot of stuff um, with my school. I played a lot of sports, did Boy Scouts, got involved with my church. And my parents kind of pushed me to do that stuff. It was not like forcing me to do it, but kind of encouraged me to do it. And getting involved with stuff like that kind of took that aspect out of it, like feeling left out, like completely out of it. Like I found my people that um, kind of accepted me for who I am and didn't really care about the spots, which anybody who cares about how I look versus how I treat them, I don't really want to be around anyway. I'll just say like I got involved with a lot of stuff and even with the surgeries and stuff like that, it set me back a little bit, you know, because you have to recover from it. But um, it was nothing that I felt like really held me back from doing anything oh, and um that was honestly like you said a little two to three years it gets easier but um yeah no I had it the, pretty much the same age as you did kindergarten I was probably closer to through like fourth grade or fifth grade is when it kind of stopped but that was also the time that I really just stopped caring about it like stuff I just stopped letting stuff get to me what people said about how I look versus how I, how I treat them kind of really started to outweigh and um yeah, and um, I was scared coming to college because I'm going to a big school right now. Like, I went to a private school in high school with, like, like 400 kids total. And my school now is, like, 40,000, something like that. So I was scared about that. But honestly, college, it's been, it's been easier to meet people. I feel like it's more people to be around. A lot of people are very accepting. Um, the ones that do give you trouble, I mean, that's just – nobody likes them it's like I, I, that's a thing like nobody likes those people that give you trouble about that because they're giving other people trouble about other stuff too yeah so it's not just like singling me out but um yeah I've, I've loved it so far I feel like it's easier in general for me as I've gotten older just to talk with more people mm -hmm. um I'm a pretty social person I feel like I'm pretty well spoken so I feel like and I, I feel like I try to respect everybody that I talk to and not really cause issues so I feel like along the lines of that, yeah, it's gotten a lot easier as I've gotten older to talk to people and they've been accepting of me. But really, I don't really notice many people having like the Nevis really affecting how people interact with me that now that I am older. You know, people will ask politely or rudely, you know, like what's on your skin or did you fall in mud or something like that? And I'm like, ha, no, it's a it's a it's a condition. I was born with these, but. I really don't think that part has changed since I was little, but the part of like talking to people, meeting new people, making new connections has gotten so much easier than I'm older. Yeah, no, it's, it has been, it's been great. I'm actually with my girlfriend right now. We've been together a little over seven months. I met her at the beginning of the school year and had no intention of getting a girlfriend my freshman year of college, to be honest. Like I was like, I'm just going to meet people and hang out and whatever. And um, my girlfriend now we just clicked and it was like we barely had to try like it just was there and so that's it's been the best relationship I've been in ever but I've dated I've dated a few girls in the past and it wasn't like the reason we broke up wasn't like anything crazy it's just we didn't have the same path but um really I've had no issue as far as the dating scene goes meeting people but um Again, I feel like that just has to do more with who you surround yourself with than what So biggest thing, let the kid be themselves. Um, there's gonna be hard times, but they'll get through it. You just gotta be there and support them the best you can. And do not be afraid to get them involved in whatever they want to do. And sometimes that's gonna take pushing them to get outside their comfort zone, not forcing them, but just encourage them to get involved in whether whatever makes them happy. Like for me, it was sports and boy scouts and church, but you know, it's going to be different for everybody. But just let the let your kid be themselves and let them figure out who they are. And, you know, obviously, like I, was, I did not tell my parents, you know, I, I told them when it bothered me that people were bullying me or whatever, or this, that and the other. But a lot of times I tried to handle things myself before I went to them. And um, that I think it made it harder on me because they gave me a lot of good advice. But sometimes, you know, the, the kid or the person with the nevis is just going to have to figure some things out for themselves you know everybody can offer advice or whatever but they aren't going through that exact situation 
So a lot of things you're going to have to learn. It's like how, growing up with Nevis is a learning curve. Like it really is. You're, you're not the same as everybody else. So, um, but yeah, the biggest thing is let the kid be themselves. They're going to have to figure some things out for themselves, but um, it's, it's not gonna, as long as you don't like shelter, if I feel like over sheltering people is going to hurt them more than like getting them involved and figuring out who they are. The things I liked about it was, was really just the diversity of people there. Like, I mean, all of them have the same condition as me, but so many different people, like so many different individuals coming from different backgrounds, different places, different countries. Um, it's so cool just to hear everyone's story and just their own experiences with a similar, well, the same condition, but, you know, similar life experiences or very different life experiences dealing with it. And um, I love meeting the, the people my age, especially just because I don't see anyone like that my age with my condition anywhere around here. So it's very, very cool to talk to them because a lot of them just you connect to better, I guess, because you're the same age. You've probably had similar experiences. Um, talking to the people that are older with it, how they have done it, you know, in the stages of life that I'm about to enter into, like getting my first job, getting out of college, settling down, um, traveling, whatever people do, you know, talking to all the older people with it. And I love talking to the younger kids about it because they're looking up to you. And that's, that's honestly my favorite part of it was the younger kids. Um, because I feel like it is the conference, or the whole Nevis outreach has grown so much, even since I was little. And there's so many more people attending, I feel like. And um, I wish I had like a role model when I was younger of someone like my age to look up to. And I feel like giving that to the younger kids is one of the best feelings in the world. Like knowing if they have any questions or just need a friend or whatever, like connecting with those kids is like hands down one of the best experiences that I got out of that whole conference. But aside from the connections with people, um, it's really interesting hearing about all the research, even though I don't understand some of it. <laughs> some of it was very, very in depth, but um, also feel like my parents got a lot out of that as well. My parents got a lot out of connecting with other parents and other family members of <laughs> relatives or friends or whoever that has Nevis so I feel like it's just everyone's supportive of no matter like who you are or where you come from everyone is just extremely supportive I was young my mom I don't know if it was if I was a newborn or if I was like three because I was very very young my first convention and I've been to like three or four I've been to Dallas a few times and then went to um Denver this this past summer but um the, the, the one in Denver is really the one that I remember the most, and that one was amazing. So much fun. I met so many people, reconnected with so many people. Um, my little buddy Fletcher from Alaska, um, he is he's young. I'm not really sure exactly how old he is, but he was my little buddy for the week. He was in all my groups when I was chaperoning and stuff. And um, I'm trying to set up a FaceTime with him actually next week because they're in a very different time zone for me right now on the East Coast, and they're in Alaska. But um, I've stayed in touch with them and that was probably one of my best memories of like the last 10 years of was going to that conference and meeting and reuniting with so many people like me and just talking about life with them. <laughs> it was just really cool. Um, I remember being a kid and um, we always went on the cool field trips like the aquarium and I don't even remember where all we went when I was younger, but um, just the cool field trips, looking up to the older kids. I remember them being there. I remember the dance at the end, um, just going on the dance floor with everyone, hanging out in that big dinner. Um, but the, like my memory is very spotty from being younger when I went, just because I was so young. And even like the fifth grade one, I remember flying on the airplane to Dallas and thinking it was like the coolest thing ever. And then we got lost trying to get out of Dallas airport. And then it seemed so hectic at first. And I got to the conference and it was just like an instant calm. So... Yeah, just a lot of memories when I was younger of the field trips and dancing and hanging out with the older kids who were so cool. <laughs> nice. So, like, that connection with the older ones, like, was, like, really meaningful to you because, like, you, oh, yeah. you can relate and then it's like, okay, there's, like, that next three, five, six, ten years, like, it's right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's why I think it means so much to me to make that connection with the younger kids and be on the other side of it because I know how much it meant to me when I was younger. What was your connection like with other people there, like with the larger ones? Or like, did you feel any discrepancy in connecting with others? 
uh, because something like that? No, I mean, I mean, I still have some pretty large ones. And even like with the Cape Nevis being gone, um, it's cool seeing the people because I've met other people that have decided to remove theirs and other people that have decided to keep theirs and just seeing like how everyone has dealt with it. And I feel like everyone there is so strong in what they do, like no matter what choice they make with the bigger ones. But I didn't really find any trouble connecting with anyone because of that being removed. Just because, again, I feel like we're all there. We all have the same thing in some way, shape, or form, and we're all there for the same reasons. So.